Hello, everybody. Today, we would like to discuss the ILS. That's right, the Instrument Landing System. Welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. This is our instrument rating course, and I am Mike Thompson. Now, remember, success in this instrument rating course depends upon three key things. Number one, you are in Epic's online course and studying this material and the related content. Number two, boy, are we glad you're watching these videos. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And number three, always discuss all of this content one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. Now, as we get into a discussion about the instrument landing system, or the ILS for short, I want you to note your reference, which will be the AIM Chapter 1. The ILS consists of three key components. Now let's break those key components down. First is guidance, second is range, and third is visual. Imagine yourself in the three-dimensional environment. You're bringing this aircraft down to a runway for a safe landing. Now you're going to need some guidance horizontally and you're going to need some guidance vertically. Secondly, you're going to want to know the range from that runway and then thirdly, some visual contact with it. So let's take these in order. In terms of guidance, we have what we call a localizer, and this provides lateral or left-right guidance, and a glide slope, which provides vertical or up and down guidance. Now, if you take a look at this picture and this diagram, the picture is what we call a localizer array. This is the localizer antenna. You might have seen these at some airports. They are at the departure end of the runway. Now this diagram is from what book? You guessed it, the AIM Chapter 1. And this is a graphical depiction of what that localizer broadcast looks like. Notice 35 degrees left or right out to 10 nautical miles and 10 degrees left or right out to 18 nautical miles. Now, that localizer will indicate a full-scale deflection when the aircraft is only one and a half to three degrees off course. Now, compare this to the 10-degree sensitivity of a VOR, and you can see the localizer is, of course, much more sensitive. If you look at these diagrams, you can see that the sensitivity is calibrated so that usable navigation is 700 feet wide at the approach end of the runway. So for shorter runways, it's less sensitive. Full deflection is three degrees. For longer runways, as you can see here, the approach end of the runway is also 700 feet. But because of that longer runway, it has a narrower and a more precise course width. Now, in this diagram, you can see that localizers also transmit what is called a back course. That localizer antenna transmits in both directions. So the localizer signal from the other direction can be used for an approach, and it's called the back course or a localizer back course approach, and I want you to go into detail with this with your flight instructor. Now, the other part of guidance is the vertical or glide slope guidance. In this picture, you can see that that glide slope antenna is located anywhere from 750 to 1,250 feet down the runway and off to the side. So here in the picture, that red and white box with that vertical red and white antenna, that's kind of what it looks like. This places that glide slope antenna within the touchdown zone where the aircraft is expected to land. 
The glide slope is very much like a localizer, but we've turned it on its side. One key difference here is sensitivity. The glide slope is much more sensitive, deviating only 0.7 degrees will cause a full-scale glide slope deflection. False glide slopes are also an issue, and you can see a diagram of that here. When a glide slope signal is reflected by its environment, these false glide slopes could mislead a pilot into flying an excessively steep descent angle. False glide slopes can be avoided by ensuring that we intercept the glide slope from below. Now, take a look at our diagram. The profile view from the approach chart depicts the minimum altitudes at which to intercept the glide slope. Now, the second part of the ILS was range. Now, ILS range components inform the pilot of their location along the approach course. In other words, how far am I from this runway? There are two technologies predominantly in use. One is marker beacons and the other is DME. Now, marker beacons come really in three flavors. That's blue, amber, and white. The outer marker is blue, and the Morse code signal over the headset are long dashes. The middle marker is amber, and the Morse code signal is dot dash, and the inner marker is white, and the signal over the headset is just dot, dot, dot. The back course marker, if we are using a localizer back course approach to this runway, will also be white and dots. <clears throat> the third component to the ILS is the visual component. Now, the visual components function to help the pilot transition from instrument flight, where they're focused entirely on the instruments, to visual flight, where they're looking outside and will land the aircraft on the runway visually. The predominant component here is, of course, lighting. The ALS, or Approach Lighting Systems, Touchdown and Centerline Lights, and Runway Lights. Now, you remember in an earlier video, we talked about FAR 91.175, and we talked about these lights in a little more detail and the requirements for visual contact with the runway. Review that video and review this content with your flight instructor. Now, let's put it all together, and I want you to take a look at this sample chart. In the course, we are using a sample approach, approach plate from the Space Coast Regional Airport, which is in Titusville, Florida, just a little bit south of beautiful New Smyrna Beach. Now, if you look up at the top, you can see that localizer can be identified in the same way you would identify a VOR. You'll tune it in and you can listen over your headset to its Morse code, Morse code signal. I want you to review this, of course, with your flight instructor. Now, that localizer frequency goes into the nav radio. And if there's a glide slope, it's automatically coupled. So, if I was going to tune in the ILS-36 here to the Space Coast Regional Airport, and I dial in the localizer, and I think to myself, well, I'm going to need a glide slope. Do I need to dial in that glide slope frequency? No. That glide slope frequency is automatically coupled to that localizer frequency, and my aircraft will receive both glide slope and localizer signals when I dial in that localizer frequency.
Now, in case you're interested in some of the technicalities about which glide slope frequency is coupled to which localizer frequency, you might be wondering, is there a chart somewhere that would relate that to me? Hmm, yes, guess where it is? You got it, it is in the AIM. In chapter one, you'll find that chart. Now, as we look at this approach plate in a little more detail, when you come down to the profile view, you can see that we've highlighted in yellow here the approach angle. And the approach angle is typically 3.0 degrees. And sure enough, here it is at Space Coast, 3 degrees. We've also highlighted the glide slope intercept altitude, which is shown by this lightning bolt and on the chart says is 2100 feet. So ideally, I'm coming in below, I'm intercepting the glide slope from below. And that little lightning bolt is pointing to the spot where I should intercept it. Now that lightning bolt is not pointing to the Maltese cross, even though it looks like it is. Remember from an earlier video that Maltese cross is the final approach fix for a non-precision approach. Now, oftentimes that lightning bolt and that Maltese cross are the same position. And on this approach, sure enough, they are the same position, but that is not always the case. Remember, the lightning bolt is the final approach fix for a precision approach. The Maltese cross, final approach fix for the non-precision approach. And then finally, let's take a look at the bottom of the profile view where we see minimums. Now, when we're looking at the minimums, you can see that we are looking at the straight in ILS 3.6, and no matter what the category is, A, B, C, or D, that this, uh, decision altitude and visibility are the same in this case for all four of those categories. Well, folks, that just about wraps up the ILS presentation. Join us next time.